Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 135, recorded on 24 July 2013. In the show, we're talking about the Ubuntu Edge. We talk OpenView HD and AxCop. Thanks for watching. In the show with me today, I've got Tim Hawk. Greetings. Been a while. It's been a while. Welcome back, Tim. Johan Els. Good afternoon. How's it? Luke Potgitter. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jan Vermeulen, and mixing the show and invisible today is Annie Vermeulen, and she did that whole mix thing on the fly without <laughs> me telling her in which order I'm going to introduce my guests. Good job. <laughs> I swear she's been doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, she's, she's got it's one like or two shows under her belt. <laughs> well, she, she understands you. What manner of geek are you, Tim? Um, web, DB, networking, a whole bunch of IT stuff. Johan? Television. So t today's show is going to be right up your alley, or you're going to have to keep quiet for most of it. Most of it, I'm going to have to keep quiet. <laughs> Luke? Gamer, general geek, I'm into everything. Sweet. I'm a telecommunications broadband and gadget geek. I write for my broadband at today, so I, I tend to, uh, like focus on that sort of stuff so it's in my day job so that's what i tend to do um if you are tuning into this live but you haven't connected to the irc yet you can do that irc.ltnet.tv standard irc port if you're using an irc client hash ltnet is the room to be in uh you can also tweet stuff at us and but for the live show where you want to be is the irc that's what we're going to be checking but uh for next week's show at let's talk geek you can also drop us an email Jan, stop being so wrong at let's talk network.tv will get to us and we'll discuss it. In, to in, not, not blame Jan. Not or blame Jan, blame Jan at let's talk network.tv is great. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> we always kick the show off with a random. We've got oh, yeah. two randoms this week and I don't know who the second one is. The first one was me though. I so one. Thank you. Thank you for claiming it. A thousand. I see that hand <laughs> <laughs> noted. Um, I so a one double oh seven, better known as the cassette. That 35 millimeter film comes in was termed not, one not, three. Not the James Bond one. No, no. Um, was termed 135 by Kodak <laughs> nice. in 1934. 135 camera film always comes perforated with Kodak standard perforations. 135. Show 135, 135 film. For the budding photographers in the room, I thought this would be particularly pertinent. I remember having to load my camera up with one of those and having to pay an arm and a leg to have photos developed. Yep. And nowadays you just hold the shutter button down and pray. And then you just load just them. Just spam and, and hope well, you well, get I pray. One. Just yeah. hold the photo <laughs> Just go. Down. Oh, no. <laughs> go. It's wrong. One of it's these wrong. will be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now th this is how the wheel turns in technology. Kodak announced in December 2012 that it plans to sell its digital imaging patents for about $525 million. For those of you who are uh, – you know, don't, don't know this industry very well necessarily. That's not a lot for patents. Um, but what do the patents cover? To uh, some of the world's biggest technology companies, thus making a step to end bankruptcy because <laughs> they're on their way there. Yeah. It's very sad, but that's the oh, way well. the cookie crumbles in the tech world, I guess. Uh, you think you're safe, especially if you're ingrained like old Xerox, the copier guys, or <laughs> Kodak, the, the camera guys, and then... <laughs> or YouTube, the search engine. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft. Yahoo, 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 the, search Yahoo, Yahoo the search engine. Or, you know, any of those guys. And then suddenly someone comes in and eats your lunch, and you don't even know who it is. And then suddenly they put your cameras on everything, and all of a sudden they don't need you no more. <laughs> um, Tim, you found uh, another thing. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Cecilia gave this to me, from, uh, and it originally came from the Daily Maverick. Fact of the day, it's been just over 40 years since the death of Bruce Lee, martial arts master and the man who did more than any other introduced kung fu to the Western world. This was not his only achievement, however, uh, although it might seem at odds with his tough guy image. Lee was also an accomplished competitive dancer and winner of the 1958 Hong Kong Cha Cha Championship. This gets a bit of a watch the movie. It, it's yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it gets a nod and drag in the Bruce Lee story. Yeah. It's actually very cool. Where he he like everything goes to hell, and he still dances a bit of a cha cha with his wife. Um, California it's, dreaming. <laughs> it's actually pretty fun. Oh, yeah. um, uh, the, just just for the yeah t today the the show's being recorded on the twenty fourth of July, um, and when we say that it's been just you know you know just over forty years, he died on twenty July, not twenty thirteen. Um, but yeah, he died on. He died 
died on 20 July. <laughs> in the show notes, it says 2013. I'm going to fix that immediately before. <laughs> that, I that, say that from, from young. Young. <laughs> yeah. um, Before that ends up in our blog, because <laughs> that'd be uh, you know me rewriting history, and I'm sure the no, family somebody will appreciate correct. that. Don't worry, you <laughs> there, will get corrections. There, there, there will be tortures and pitchforks. That one guy. Yeah. We're coming for you, Gun. <laughs> Damn you. All right. We're going to head right into the quick geek. Or the mixer wants to say something. You're not mic'd up, so I can barely hear you. Yay! There's a bit There we go. <laughs> Blame. <laughs> Blame, Jan. Blame, Jan. Oh, yeah. All right. That brings us to the quick geek. First, thing, first things first, an interactive map of the entire games, Game of Thrones universe and what's awesome about this map, it's at quartermaster.info, which is pretty cool. Um, what makes it so great, this was discovered by our intrepid mixer, Annie, who has decided not to speak to us today because she hates us, is that you can check off who you want to track. And then there's a slider at the top, which is just out of the frame. But then there's a slider at the top that lets you go through the Game of Thrones timeline to track exactly where those characters are in the world at a particular time. And there are spoiler warnings. Um, so, but my recommendation is just, just read a whole book before you start playing with this and, uh, and then start tracking. Don't, don't trust the series because that timeline is totally, totally off topic. Do you think they're using Google? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Google Maps because I know you can load your own maps and they've got a whole bunch of cool things. And doing, it looks like the new engine. With it recently. Yeah? looks like the new engine. It, it does. Um, but th- that could just, it could be, just be skin to look like the new engine. But, um, it would make sense for them to use the new engine because Google is like migrating everybody over. So, yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Nice. Just to bring more geek into it. Uh, good, uh, good job, Mixer. That's a good find. Uh, Luke, no, this is a little gross, but still geeky. A mo- I, I like the idea, but... A mobile phone that runs on P. Oh, uh, what? It, 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 they make it sound cooler than it is, but actually it's a, it's a, it's a charging system where you can, you can charge arbitrary things off of your own urine. Um, and uh, in saying that, it's not like it's a, an instant charge. Uh, you have to wait about 24 hours. At any event, um, the whole system revolves around uh, microbes. Uh, they don't specify which kind. I guess that would be telling. But uh, it's the kind of benign ones that can even sit inside your, your gut. Um, and uh, what they do is that they, they pass urine through the microbes and the, micro- uh, and the microbes feed on them. And they release electrons as a byproduct and then they 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 harness those electrons via super caps and uh so forth and stash stash that current away and then you know for bulk it up for later and you can charge things with it so the this- after I don't know. That, I don't know what kind of metrics this urine has, but <laughs> uh, given given twenty four hours, you can charge a phone for long enough to send several SMSs, like a six minute phone call, and uh, a bit of browsing, a bit of browsing, and that's <laughs> it. Appa- apparently, the phone calls the most energy. Um, hungry of all, all the things. Yet another yes. reason we should just be switching everything over to IP. Just data, VoIP. There we go. Yeah, but we would still be. You, the reason why yes, uh, well. phones are, are lower is because it turns off once you've downloaded the web page. So, okay, so yeah. it's not this continually uh, going on system. I don't know, I don't know how this is going to do for our ratings. You must just take it out after the show. But there's a brilliant comment from MCD in the RSC. Battery life is piss poor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ain't it just? <laughs> but well uh, done. There's, there's also a way more informative video that you can go and click on. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the, this this uh, gives a whole new, I think, dimension to Bear Grylls. Uh, there's like this meme. There were very many piss drinking comments on the original article that I found this on. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's there. It, it, it's, uh, it's like the quintessential P meme on the internet. I just wonder, course. with all this stuff, wouldn't you also just be able to just like put juice in there and it work, would work better? I, I would think so. Yeah. I mean, it's just beer. Here's a microbe. It charges this thing and releases electrons as a yeah, byproduct. Just any, anything that the microbe so, can use yes. as a substance. To so eat. maybe you could find that you could use any other microbe and a different substance. Yeah. You know. But the important thing here as well is that the P is not entirely consumed. You will still have product come out again. Uh, at the end of the process, so uh, so it's, make, it's it's not a complete you know you can't just 
So dry the dry yes, the charging yes, mechanism yes. <laughs> yeah, before yeah. You, you put it in your pocket <laughs> is what you're saying. No, it's it's a large doodad. I mean, it, okay. if we had the video, it's 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 huge. You wouldn't just casually carry this around. <laughs> okay, these comments in the IRC. Can we move along? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Uh, your people are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> All right, so sand dunes poised to overrun the Star Wars set. I remember seeing the story some time ago. Um, it's actually sad and interesting at the same time you found this luke what's going on so the set for i thought originally it was the uh, a new hope set but i saw subsequently it's the the episode one set which lessened my feeling about this a bit. yeah they, they, they but, sold uh, it a bit on, on uh, slash dot what, then what's apparently happening is that the original set for moss esther i believe it's name esper moss esper uh is going to be consumed by a sand dune uh for, sh- for a period. For a per- period, right. But they've got some cool name for it. Let me just look it up. Uh, it's something like modal. Yeah. Ugh, okay, it's not important. I'm going to call it Pac-Man. And, and Pac-Man, <laughs> <laughs> Pac-Man's coming for the, this set slowly over time. And what's interesting about it is that, well, they, they're using it to, you know, come up with Wait, a new, look, like, sorry. science. You know, I want to just <laughs> something from IRC. <clears throat> Hit by Dune. Yes. yes. Star Wars worm hit by sign. Dune. Worm <laughs> sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Good job. And um, so it's a bit sad, I guess, if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, but what I enjoyed about this article was that I didn't know that there was like a branch of science that you have for like tracking dunes. Uh, Apparently, this happens on, on multiple other planets. So they've seen these on Mars and a couple yes. of the other ones. Um, and they just r- move around with the winds. They're very cool, but it will just keep on moving. It's it not will just like... keep on moving. So it will eventually pop out again at the end, and they just don't know if it's going to be whole uh, when it comes back out. So yeah, or, how heavy or does very the become? Holy. Yes, or because the I would guess that the sand would just strip that thing down. It's, it's effectively like sandpaper. Yeah. You know? yeah. So uh, apparently, this has happened to the uh, the original set, the Star Wars Episode Four set, mm-hmm. is nearby. It's like a few kilometers away. It is completely submerged in sand at the moment, so you you can't visit there anymore. Oh, <laughs> so for those of us who might have warm fuzzy feelings towards a 1970s yeah. movie, sorry it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Time marches on. Then another one from you, Luke. A self-assembling multicopter demonstrates networked flight control. So this is interesting because each individual copter that you see in this setup uh, cannot fly by itself. It's impossible. Um, due to you know, really sciencey stuff that I don't quite follow at the moment, uh, you need to connect at least two together to make it do anything. And what's interesting about this bot is it's not trying to communicate to some common server to do whatever it is it does, you know, flying around. These little bots connect to one another and then communicate with one another directly to, to, to fly. From, from what I get, there's also, that also yes. independence. Each yes. one's trying to reach the goal of, let's say, moving it there. Yes. So it's not like you have a central – it's not like they're speaking to each other and have a central In a centralized way, yes. It's like I'm going to move forward. And it's like, oh, I see he's moving forward, but now we've gone too far. I'm going to try and counteract. And as a whole, they counteract one another – very nicely. Keep one another in equilibrium, as it were, yes. to, to get the job done. But I see they um, do it in different configurations as well. They self assembling. Yes. They self assembling. So what happens is they will drop onto the ground, yeah. drive around a little bit, pick a configuration, and then based on you know preconceived or predetermined stuff, they will then go, oh, I'm you know I'm the the the, the bot in the front. I must rotate clockwise, and the guy behind will say I'm the one at the back. I must rotate counterclockwise so that we can reach the equilibrium for flight. Because if they both go in the same direction, there there's torque involved, and the whole thing will just spin out of control. Uh, okay. So again, if they're by themselves, they cannot fly. They well, have to fly in tandem with one another. I, I don't know if you saw the demo where one yes. of them tried to fly, because, yes. because you think it's now it can go up and it gets a bit point where it's unstable and then it just shoots off to the side. So it can't actually go up straight up in a column and then control itself to move. Interesting. So, so you need at least two of them it's, to It's that weird three. vortex effect that you get a few like centimeters off the ground. It yeah. can fly up to about here, and then from there on it's just Well, it, now think about it. There's, there's no balance. Yes. yes. So it, even if it dips even like slightly, it, it will shoot off yeah. the side. In any case, so this is also s- – Nice, because it's made from super cheap materials. Uh, so it's stuff that is commonly available in cell phones. It's exactly the same tech. And they 3D printed all of the, um, the, the, you know, the bot frames and things like that. So it's really 
What interesting things, research. Things That's are getting cool. really cheap and cool. I mean, imagine like future future cars, for instance, if they could use the same kind of tech. You know, we could we could in theory have flying vehicles. I'm not saying now, but you mean I can have my DeLorean finally. Uh, yeah. but, maybe but years you, from you now. You can't use it by itself. No, no. You, yeah, you yeah. need to work in convoys. <laughs> maybe it'll make like a bus or something. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, um, with that, I'm going to move us on a, a, a little bit. Johan, um, you went to MediaTek this past week. Yes. Um, so briefly, um, what did you see there that was really, really cool? MediaTek, just the background, is the movie and film industry, but also audio industry in South Africa. <clears throat> so every two years, they pack out at Northgate. Uh, the dome and then they, everybody tries to sell their goods so the guys do back up quite impressive equipment you see the bigger TVs and the 4k TVs and that sort of stuff is there um, inside yeah audio was a big player this year it looks like discos and stuff are still alive so that was very good but uh, like I said before amazing was outside every year they pay, they use it part of the Northgate shopping centers parking lot and they actually erect stages where people can then sell their stage audio equipment. So what you'll use at concerts and that sort of stuff. And they give everybody a, a section or a little stage. So they pack out their stuff and off we go. What then does happen is, uh, which I noticed for the first time, is um, four years ago, the media tech, I can tell you, I was at a launch inside of the cinema in Northgate. And somebody at one of those stages decided to push up that volume. And you could hear it inside of a cinema in Northgate. So yeah. that went out of control. <laughs> That's right? impressive. So what they did this year is they had a guy at the back with a decibel meter. So everybody could present their audio equipment, but up to a certain decibels. All right. So nobody running, running away because he would clearly show you come down. And apparently they were finding stands as well. So if you wanted to now really impress a customer, you could run it, but then you're going to pay for it. Went all the way through and ended up at the last stand, which is Malden Moor. Okay, if you don't know Malden Moor, they are the big boys. They're the guys that handle all the international acts and stuff, big five concerts and that. So they've got... And they've got big contracts with JBL, and they do a massive equipment for that. But then they've wrapped up, and on the same stage, I had another chap that did some other stuff, and then the last chap came up. And I've got to tell you this. I've got a picture of those. I actually took it on my cell phone. Sorry. My camera was in my car. Those are six uh, – it's actually six nine speakers you're looking at. It's got three bases at, a, at the bottom. It's got three mitts and then three piece, uh, uh, tweeters. The big thing about these speakers, they were not self-powered. So he was actually running them from an amp from a control desk quite a couple of meters away. And you can see in the, slightly in the photo at the bottom that there's gravel and stuff lying around that was moving forward and backward and forwards <laughs> and backwards. <laughs> and it was just amazing. And then the, the top of it all is you can't really – if you compare it against, if you know anything about speakers, look at the back. You've got the JBL sub with that pipe and the speaker on the top. You've got an idea of that size. So these things are smaller than that. I mean lower. And just after you wrapped up, you go, all these guys walk up and measuring the six speakers up to see if they're going to fit in their cars. This was, just, <laughs> this was just awesome. This was just brilliant. <laughs> but in any case, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately over. Um, I can quickly, it's not in the calendar. This um, future ed is starting tomorrow and running to Saturday, also at the Dome. If you want anything in educational, the guys are selling their goods there regarding interactive boards and training systems and management systems, all that stuff. That is happening at the Dome from tomorrow till Saturday. But otherwise, yeah, two years' time, go catch, catch, uh, see how the industry works. I mean, I can keep on forever. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. It sounds like it was really interesting in the end. Quattrocopters with cameras at the bottom. and I, I love that, that story stuff, that you told yeah. me. Like, th these, these are not the, the quadrocopters. The, this isn't, these are not Parrot AR drones, like, like us, us, you know, uh, enthusiasts or it's amateurs. It's not the cheapies. Yeah, no. m might, might be C, you know. And, and those, little, <laughs> those little ones that make whining sounds. Uh, when and go that, nowhere. <laughs> that you're watching YouTube videos or whatever. These are these are big quadrocopters with massive, like t multi Sorry. ten thousand like rands. Well, almost a hundred thousand rands with the camera equipment. If you take out the glass and the body, um, so they've got a big. I mean, they've got big DSLR cameras at the bottom that is suspended in such a way that they've got uh, gyro controls to keep the camera stable. Even though the quattro is stable, but the camera stays cable. Then they've got equipment hooked on the back. It sends a signal back to the ground. So you've got your DOP or the director of photography has got a view of the camera plus then Very an nice. operator. But these things are so sophisticated, you can actually take it up to a point hover and you can leave the controls. And a copter will stay there, even against That's very conditions. Cool. Mm. And it will sit there. And I something mean, you told me that was also amazing, because this equipment is so expensive and probably what's more important than the equipment is the footage, yes. that quadrocopter has, uh, has an emergency landing point. So if it runs out of juice or if it, it loses signal with you, 
it returns to that point. Okay, for actually, cool. All those, these are, th- those are similar to those ones, and I've heard the ones that they use for, for tracking. And it, it basically gets got a space, it takes off, it does its route around the place yep. and camera, and it's got your night vision, all the rest of it, and it'll, it'll do detection of people and follow people. Gets to the point, it's like, oh, wait, I'm out of power, and finds its way back to the space station, plugs Lanes. it. It's the Roomba. Here we go. It's, it's a flying Roomba. Roomba. Yeah. yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, cool stuff. Something interesting I came across is, is, is an article. I'm just going to read the title and then, then we'll discuss it. Why time slows down when we're afraid, speeds up as we age, and gets warped on vacation. So now an interesting thing that and, – and I think it's a fact what we throw around a lot is, is as we age, time seems to move faster. And yes. So, and so the common explanation – we we geeks at least all give to one another is the mathematical one. <laughs> when uh, at, at age 30, a single, that single year of your life is a 30th of your life as opposed to at age 8 where that year was an eighth of your life kind of thing. I, I must be honest. I always thought it was just because the clock started to speed up. Because <laughs> you do have a clock inside your brain. Oh, oh, oh you, you, mean, you have a slight tick. Going on. Or, so, so now this is the 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 the, the, pro, the pro, proportionality theory is one that I've heard quite a lot, and it's even featured in a bitter end of song. Oh, okay. uh, they're, they're a South African <laughs> rap group, um, and and this article says it doesn't actually answer all the questions w- with regards to the the relativity of time in our own brains. Because the fact is, even if you're forty, even if you're sixty, standing in a queue at the shop is still. It still feels like time drags. Doesn't matter how old you are, <laughs> time drags but, but, in that but, moment but when all, he's all sitting in home like to queue. <laughs> <laughs> But surely Sorry. it's just because we're like busier when we're older. I mean, and and that is the theory that they posit is that um, in, that you you actually get busier, and so all of a sudden it just feels like time is is passing faster because I can you, think that even when I'm standing in a queue or something what happens is I'm thinking like work or other things that I could be doing so the time passes well, fast anyway because I'm thinking about it or I'm wasting time on my phone when last yeah. did you stand in a queue and do nothing think about it actually uh, uh, yeah. sorry I can't but, say but what, if, last if, time if you, was applying for a visa at Netherlands because I had to leave my phone in the car yeah yeah but, but, but other than that to, just to ruin that as, as a reason <laughs> if you speak to your parents who are retired they will give you the same statement that it's a lot quicker than it used to be. Mm. And, and mm. another p- potential reason these guys mm. give is the fact that our lives just move faster now. So yes. uh, for the, wo- a, the world moves yeah, quicker. Yeah. To, to our parents, when they were 20, the world was moving faster than when they were eight. To us, even though the world is moving much faster, relatively speaking, than when our parents were our age, um, it, it, you know, compared to what we are used to, the fact is the, the world is moving faster. And, and I mean, it's a, it's a thing that's said often, and I think it's, it's sort of common cause, to use the legal phrase, that the world is moving faster. We have, we've all got a communications device in our pocket. Um, smartphones have effectively destroyed boredom. And there, there's just, and on top of that, it keeps you constantly connected. You're never without email or with, or with a way for the, people the, to reach other you. Other reason which was in this, which I sort of liked, is that part, part of your memory is also relative. You, you know, you, you measure how many ticks by things you remember. Yes. Um, so, so. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, the, uh, how, how the clarity of a memory is how your brain determines how far back it is. Yeah, but I'm thinking, so if you, when you're younger, everything's new. Yes. So if you think in an hour, the amount of new information you store is huge. When, when you're older, you're now storing less information. So you must go, oh, it must have gone quicker because otherwise I would remember it more. Yes, yes. That, that, that's, that's one thing. And, and now um, what, what the other interesting thing that comes out of this is um, – uh, you, when when you start looking, the, they, they call it time telescoping. So when when it actually seems like when you think back, uh, uh, and the, the example they used is when did Diana die? Think quickly. When did Diana die? And it, and it feels ages ago. August. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, why do you know? I that? do not know. <laughs> I, I can promise you this. I do not know why I know, but some things just, yeah. they stay. So <laughs> if you don't have the the physical. The, the, the hard and fast absolute date on hand, then because of the, the, the many decades that that's away, it feels like it's ages ago. And so what this particular author that this article is summarizing is saying is that we actually s- sort of uh, compartmentalize our memories into decades. So um, if it's in this decade, then you know, it's, it actually feels much closer than what it really is. Um, but if it's in, a, in the decade before that, 
then it feels like really, really far away, like the Matrix, for example, which was in <laughs> I have a hard time with that one because I'm sure your the brain doesn't, doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah, interestingly. I'm sure your brain doesn't store stuff linearly. So, I mean, how also, does it, just, yeah. just dream is every time you recall memory, you, you, over, it. you, you, yes. you add more memory to it. That was another interesting thing in, in so, here as well, that, that memory is not trustworthy at all. No, no. not at all. Or well, things that you fondly remember probably didn't even happen. Are yeah. we now really uh, debating memory to this point? Luke, yes. <laughs> what did you wait, order wait, for supper? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping us. Uh, Thank uh, you. This <laughs> is called Let's Talk Geek. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. we're geeking right. out okay. about the relativity memory. of time in your brain. Absolutely. Okay. But next topic, Office 4.0 released. Uh, there was me. Open uh, Office. Uh, open Office. Uh, look. Is yes, this no, a future in Office? Libre Office. Um, sometimes you still need hard copy. Until yes. um, I can offline, but when my eighty cell dies, yeah. still get to Google Docs. Until that happens, yes. So you think it's still pipe a future? Dreams, yeah. Pipe dreams. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I just, I think these guys are dying. Or, I mean, offline, but I mean, I'd okay. say the coolest Although, part about this thing is that they they allow you to code your own plugins now. That's mm. it. I mean, I would say that's now the power. Okay, hold thing. on. Let's just go back because I'm going to get yeah. to yeah. something later on in the show. Um, Okay, so Apache's Open Office, Libre, Libre Office, Libre Office. Libre, yeah. They freestanding. No, okay. Who's got? Who's no, got the, Sun the, has the, got? the problem is Sun used to have Open Office, which then went to Oracle. Oh. Oracle then sort of stifled uh, Open Office quite badly. The guys in the community say, "We've got these patches, we want to apply them," and they insisted. I think there was also some licensing issues. So eventually, the guys said, "Well, it's open source. We're going to fork it." Yes. And they created LibreOffice. They applied all the patches that should have been applied to OpenOffice. Okay. Age goes, and LibreOffice just jumped ahead. Eventually, Oracle is like, oh, well, we've lost, we've lost anyway. So then it releases as an Apache project, which means it falls under the Apache Foundation. Okay. And at that point now, it's so, actually separate from Office. They, they're now doing stuff again. But it, you must remember, everything they do, LibreOffice can then pull in now. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, so who are these guys are going to take the first step and take this Office suite to a web based? No one. You don't think so? It's, it's, it's no, a different it, system. It's a, a, a whole different code base. You're, you're coding for a whole different platform. Uh, you're coding for server architecture as opposed to client architecture. It's just yeah, This is written in Java. If you're to, to recompile this, I don't know how you You'd have to rewrite it. everything. I'm you'd asking, have, to, you'd yeah. have to rewrite the client code. You couldn't even use – I don't even think you, you could reuse the dictionary code. Um, oh, you, you, you could. Look, there are things like ASM and I can't remember another one. Yeah, I guess. Which you could recompile. I don't know if you've seen the uh, – But what a waste. Just use web technologies that are probably readily available that do this already and cobble them together instead. Yes. Yeah, no, instead of trying to for this the something, Look, for the dictionaries, for, things, for certain parts of it, you, you could just recompile it and you, you would get very, very efficient code. I don't know if you saw the ASM that's sort of they've worked out. It's two times native C compiled code speed. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Uh, they've got the Unreal Engine 3 running in uh, Firefox. With yes. It. I remember seeing that. It's yeah, incredible. It's impressive. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the thing is, if you want an office suite in the cloud and you – sorry, I said cloud. You can lynch me tomorrow. Um, that is not Google. There are options. Zoho. Yes, for example. So I'm, I'm now – Google pissed me off, upset me for the last <laughs> time. I need to find – I just need some free time. And Zoho is the one I found. I'm going to be trying in the next two, three weeks. Okay, cool. Um, but interesting points because, it, Johan, now what's interesting is I, I'm quite a believer in the rich client software. Mm -hmm. um, yes. For for certain things, like for example, IRC, <laughs> it's, it's handy to just have a client or an IM to have a client rather than having that open in the browser. But it, I mean, the fact is, for this show that we put together, we don't use rich client software. We do we do all our word processing type stuff in in the browser. Um, and so one wonders, even though I am wholly opposed to re replacing all our client software with the browser, when it comes to Collaboration. Yes. And, and office packages, productivity software, it does seem like a natural home for them. I've got Look, my CEO, G, talking to me now. So when are we going to finish the presentation? I, I, I still think it's <laughs> – We're it's working on one presentation point, at the same time. I the mean. final solution is actually have almost like a web server client that you download that sits in your browser. And when you speak, you speak to that. And when you're on the internet, it's literally just a proxy through. Yeah. And when you're not, you have a real web server. And they tried like this twice It's like a document though. thing that – needs to back in to get to something yes. so that you can get a local copy yeah. when you sever ties to the internet. Yeah. I, I'm going to move us along. Sorry, there was one thing I yes. wanted to mention about that. This is very cool. They're now starting to move the tabs from the top and they're giving you a bar on the left and you know on the left. And the whole reason is, I don't know if you've noticed, screens are not getting wider. Yeah. Uh, and you've got all this wasted space on the side. Yes. 
uh, you know, not getting through it, they are getting wider. Yes. Um, so finally, here's an app that's going to utilize some of that space. All right. Cool. Interesting cool. stuff. Um, I'm going to move us along into the Axe Cop. This sounds amazing, uh, especially it, considering that that it's uh, from the sounds of it, this is meant to be the name of a superhero of some kind, the Axe Cop. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. It, if you haven't come across it, it is awesome. AxeCop.com. Yes, Axe It's a online comic. It's done between a twenty-nine year uh, two brothers. One's twenty-nine year old, the other one's five. Those, the, wow. the twenty-nine year old is the guy who does all the drawing, and I would imagine just makes the story fit together. Coherent and the, slightly, the, the five-year-old is the writer of the storyline, um, and you can see it because it's about Axe Cop, and he's got a brother called Flute Cop. Uh, and they start off, you know, when they were younger, their parents died from eating too much candy canes because they only used to eat candy canes uh, for supper and breakfast or the rest of it. But turn out, no, no, it's not because they were actually poisoned by a telescopic cop when he came back in the future using uni baby's horn to, to – <laughs> okay. I love this I already. didn't get that far. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, uh, which ass cop and flu cop found out when they were kids but, and swore to have revenge against <laughs> – uh, telescopic cop but unfortunately in a, a walking backwards and hitting the head accident they got amnesia and forgot about each other and the the, the, the <laughs> thing that they were going to kill this guy that's the first page of, of the comic <laughs> now just all of it is just like that it's just it's it's got you can see you've got the kid just coming up with random and like oh this and this and this and then you just shot them all <laughs> yes. it's, and it's they all so, just died yeah. and it, but it actually works really well because you actually obviously got the older guy who's and you can see the comments where the kid just jumps from one and then obviously the brother like falls in stuff between. But it, it is well worth it. But the whole reason why we're talking about they've now released a TV show which we all get here. Uh, Never. Yeah. You mean we can just download it on the internet, right? They're going to have it available so that yes, I can yes. give okay. them my money okay. and just download their stuff. You know, That's what I want to um, do. And you, know, you don't want to be a pirate and go, go get it because it is available out there. And it is awesome. Okay. Good stuff. And it's about 86 megs for – was tiny. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> Go check out Axe Cop. Yes. <laughs> T Rex with Gatling guns. Oh, oh, are you? <laughs> oh, that breathes fire. Yes. Why not? And, and can Sunglasses. turn into a metal wings flying <laughs> thing that can go between planets because the dragon wizard made it happen. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm going to give these guys all my money because it's. <laughs> This, like something like this just has to be supported. It's, it's, it's such uh, a fantastic just, sorry, idea. Axe Cop got his cop because he happened to be at a fire and he found the perfect axe. Okay. Yes. It doesn't <laughs> have to make you know, sense. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, an anime called Furikuri? Yes. Yeah, so for the anime geeks out there, I mean, like, I have yet to find a more random anime than FLCL. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop us there with a quick geek. I don't know how we did there, Mixer, but it felt, <laughs> it felt fantastic. Um, you're more than welcome to score points, even though you're not mic'd up. <laughs> we all win. No uh, points all round. <laughs> <laughs> no one wins. Sure. A mixer wins. But, sure. let, let, let's get into some events. Um, for the events we don't list today, uh, you can just head to stardates.co.za. If you uh, think that we've missed out an awesome geeky event that, that we haven't please put in the show notes, please let us know. Um, Johan, where can people let us know? Uh, against anything at stardates.co.za. Anything at stardates.co.za. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, because, for example, we did not, in fact, list internetics once in the last few weeks and that that was a grave oversight What's on our internetics? part internetics is internet solutions conference um that uh, was held this week um it was it was semi interesting um i'm not going to discuss it now but uh we can certainly talk about it after the show if there's cool. time cool. um first up dark carnival geek fest on saturday the 31st of august this tickets available quite interesting. Tickets. and it's yeah. in johannesburg and not cape town for once in cool view, huzzah yeah. All right. So, so if, every time we see these things, then it's like, and then it's yeah. in Cape Town. So, so is this going to be like, uh, like a standard geek con? Some cosplaying, some exactly. Wait, wait. There's cosplay. There's robot wars, and there's um, a dog show. A dog sounds, show sounds great. A dog show, not a, a dog, dog show, not a dog and pony show. No, uh, I want ponies. It's a one day event, thirty first of July, thirty first of August. Sorry, August, yes, thirty first of August, Bedford View. It looks very interesting. <laughs> it does. Okay, Sorry. very cool. All right, so we'll we'll keep you updated as we've got more information on that. It sounds pretty cool, and I might even go check this out. Mum, this Friday. What's a mum, Microtech fanboys? Microtech user meeting. Okay. All right. In South Africa. In South Africa, Johannesburg. <laughs> uh, it's on Friday. Johan, I tried it. It actually let me go to the registration page. 
Oh, so it's still open? Looks like it. Okay, great. Well, if you haven't been, uh, uh, it's a lot of their own pump blowing their own horn on their products and stuff, which they can really Look, have the horn. Yes. <laughs> no, th- this product, I must say, is a very, very good product. It's, it's, for its price, it's, it's the best wireless system I've come across. Yeah. You're not going to do carrier great stuff on this, but I mean, you're, you're going to be able to handle what you do in your house and even like what we're doing here at House for Hack with that with no problem. And, and most of the wireless user group runs on this. Uh, uh, one thing, this is not your mother's for your mother. It, no. it, it is a bit more advanced than that. Like for example, it doesn't do automatic natting. You have to set that up yourself. Oh, the yes. horror. <laughs> but, but it's very easy. But it's you really can good. pick between SNAT, DNAT and Masquerade. Ooh. So if you don't know what the differences Ooh. are, don't buy this product. Well, okay. or just Google them. If you know how to Google those and are interested in Googling those things, then Google them and buy this product. But in any case, so if your registration is still open, you, pay, you, you can fork up $30, which I've done, and you'll get a, a Route to OS license. Ooh. You'll get lunch, a T-shirt, and something else. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun on Friday. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about what geekery is this. First up, some interesting news on the broadcasting front is a uh, – service called OpenView HD launching in South Africa in October 2013 and this was quite cool because uh, tooting my own horn here but I got to I got to break the news and that's a really good feeling um, I'm sure the guys at ETV and Platco don't feel warm <laughs> warm towards me necessarily um, but as a journalist I mean this is the kind of thing that I live for um, but <clears throat> What the service is about, because who the hell cares how good the journalist feels about breaking the, the, the news, really. Um, it is a <laughs> – I'm getting awes from Luke. <laughs> it is a free satellite TV service within reason. Obviously, it's free the same way that, a, that, your, that your normal TV service is free. You have to put an antenna on the roof and you have to have a tuner to receive it. So in satellite well, terms – A dish. Yeah. In satellite terms, that means an antenna, a dish, a dish antenna. Those are antennas. They're not called if you talk if you tell a satellite guy it's a dish, he's gonna tell you it's an antenna. Uh, if you're gonna tell him a dish, he's gonna tell you it's a reflector with an LMB inside. <laughs> yes. But I would say they're not going to yeah. call it an antenna. I've, ne- I've heard lots of satellite guys tell me that it's an antenna. Okay, but it's the right it's a reflector with a LMB. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And, and a noise block. Yes. And then you need a decoder or as they call it in the industry, a set top box. Without uh, without that thing, you can't you can't transform the signal that this thing uses into something that your TV can understand. The, 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 um, the, for, since we're, we're a geek show, your TVs typically have uh, tuners built in. You don't even know this probably because I didn't know this until I started covering broadcasting. Wait, wait, wait. If you're really a geek, so, so the set-top box is the transponder. It does that, but it also does uh, encoding and decoding of the – not what encoding? It, it converts encoding. Yeah, one, encoding. one thing decoding. from one format into another. Yes. yes. And so, into, so, for example, these things, especially HD decoders, will have HDMI out. Yeah. So it will accept, in this particular case, a signal in DVB-S2 format. It will unpack that, and it will send it over the HDMI wire to your beautiful TV and give you a beautiful picture. Um, and what makes this so interesting is the fact that there's no subscription fee going to be charged. So these guys are saying that they're looking at about 15 channels. Um, sort of ETV model. And it is, in fact, run by ETV, a sister company of theirs called Platco. They're owned by the same investment holding company. And so I think we can expect to see SABC123, ETV, some other ETV properties. And then they said five HD channels. Um, and uh, Ailey's gave us a ballpark price of 1,900 Rand. That's installed. That's installed. That's a, that's a dish and installation and decoder. And uh, that will probably will probably be lower end options. Um, this is probably going to be like a like a, a fairly good decoder that you're going to get with this. So can some, I record? I don't know, um, but it's it will it will be HD. Just it's it's the one it, thing I've realized. It's one thing you want the I, most because yeah, I, I got uh, okay. That's, I can't P- answer. I know P- it's P- unlikely. PVR, I can't yeah. answer that question. PVR however. is something that they're looking at. Yeah. However, mm. this is going to be a free to air broadcast on an S2 platform. You could typically just go and buy yourself a PCI S2 receiver card, load. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. I, 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 and I'm, build I'm your own PVR. Built in. You don't want to have to go to the faff of getting yeah, extra it, the stuff. The problem is you, you're, the competition these guys have is the internet. Yes. So if they make it that I've got to go get a PC to download a show no, but to you save can, it, you then, can buy then I'm going to – Most people – S2 decoders. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying if they're going to go PBR. to that amount of effort, the, yes. the, my worry is people are going to go, well, it's easier to, to torrent. 
Because because that's the competition. Well, no, but they're not actually aiming for that market yeah. at all. So um, they've uh, the, the the information that I have, they've not confirmed this as such. But um, they have said that they're not aiming for the high end of the market. They're aiming for what um, they call LSM four to seven, and which, if you translate that into something people can actually understand, is household incomes of between three thousand and just over ten thousand rand. Okay. Um, so this is not aimed at people with uncapped internet connections that can torrent stuff. This is aimed. Um, at almost, and I'm being a bit of an analyst here, which I really shouldn't be doing. But like, what this looks like to me is something to compete with our government's own digital terrestrial television thing that they've been uh, dragging their feet on to roll out here yeah, for the last five years or whatever. Um, so, uh, e- ETV is making a play here to become the de facto free-to-air standard in the country. Look, uh, yeah, look, I must say for everything, I think this is very cool. Yeah. We are, are starting to need more of these free-to-air and, things. And, and uh, in, in honesty, this is something that I, even as a uh, not not somebody in LSM 47 is going to check out. I yeah. do not have a subscription TV service. I have no inclination to have a subscription TV service because um, because of purely what it costs now to get a decent service. It's just too too rich mm-hmm. for my blood. Um, like you feel almost obliged to watch TV when you cough up almost 700 rand a month for subscription service. Like if you're not watching TV, then why? It's like having a gym contract you don't use. Keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my thing with all of these ones is just, and, and this, I do come because I did try the other one that I actually can't blank on their name now. Top TV. Top TV. Um, same satellite, by the way. Open and, View and Top TV run on the same it's, satellite. It sounds funny. I, I'm willing to pay a bit more to get the recording capabilities. But when you have a busy life, you, you don't have time to watch when the things are available. Mm. So, but you want to, when I sit down, I want to watch it, but then they, there's going to be some arbitrary random other thing on so, you know, give me an option, you know, I, and look, I understand it's more expensive. Give me the option to pay, and I would have very happily paid for it with, within reason. <laughs> and, and, but yes. that's it. I mean, multi choice does charge for PVR access. Yeah. They charge, what, yeah. 60 Rand a month or whatever for, yeah. for PVR access. So, yeah. um, I guess, I mean, if it's something, if it's that kind of cost, you'd, you'd say that that's you'd reasonable. More than. Okay. Um, yeah, so definitely something interesting, definitely something worth looking at. Well, even if you, you know, charge me another 600 to 800 on top of the normal, um, Decoder price. Decoder price, yeah. Um, uh, but the, uh, I know that uh, running PVR is not as simple as just letting people record stuff. You have to have an, uh, an EPG. Uh, and Sorry there. Yes, there will be yeah. an EPG, but then you'll also need to build in capabilities to set recording times and that sort of things. It's really there. Yeah, okay. So When you've got EPGs broadcasting on the DVB platform, it's… Yeah, it's, it's, it's trivial to implement PVR from there. PVR is simple. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. So, so um, very interesting news in the broadcasting space in South Africa. I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys are doing. Um, for those of you in industry who might stumble across this podcast for whatever reason, the roadshow is running until the 2nd of August. They're, they're, they're doing a, a countrywide roadshow. Started in PE at the start of the week, and they are going to tour the country, and the last one is in Durban. Um, so, yeah, if you're in the industry and you want to find out what this is about, I hear that they are going to confirm channels soon, and then hopefully we'll be able to say what the 15 channels are. They're playing at Koi right now, and I think it's because they're just trying to finalize the last few details before they make the announcement. Then the other big news that we're going to talk about today that is not Google, whose conference is ongoing right now. We'll talk about that <laughs> next week, probably. Um, well, we can mention, let's mention that very quickly. All right. Nexus, news Nexus 7 has just been uh, released. Well, announced. announced. Um, effectively 1080p, but it's, yeah, it's 10, uh, 1920 by 1200, which is 8 by 5, but it allows for the, bot- the buttons at the bottom, effectively. Yes. Um, Looks quite interesting. Thirty percent better color. Um, yeah, uh, the okay. uh, 3D graphics. Uh, the 3.0 version of it, which is quite good. Quad core 1.5. I think Snapdragon um, it comes in up to 32 gigs LTE. LTE model now. LTE nice. model. Okay. That's far more impressive There's to me. There's nothing wrong with yes. the current one's display. Display. Like 1080p display is ridiculous on a small screen like that, but I'd probably get lynched. I, I think it's just like what that. they're competing against. You know, the uh, okay, else. so it's more chasing that. Bandwagon. Yeah, because everybody yeah. else has it. If you don't have it, they're going to go, well, I'm going to get yours. The difference okay. is like 16 DPI anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and I also think that they probably look at the cost difference and go, yeah. you know, it'll cost us more to just not have this in there. Yeah. Um, um, but they did bump up the CPU and the RAM. That's yes. the most important yeah. one. Yes. My, my and LTE. Biggest complaint right. to this whole thing is it has DRM chips built into it. And this is why we're going to start, discuss it next week so yes. we can rant about that at length. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop us right there before this gets go, out of go. hand. Ubuntu is uh, has announced the Ubuntu Edge. And this also came 
like completely out of left field for me. They they put, uh, launched an Indiegogo campaign. For those of you who are not familiar with Indiegogo, it's a lot like Kickstarter. For those of you who are not familiar with Kickstarter, it's you a, haven't it's, watched this enough. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> it's, it's it's a platform where. Uh, Companies or individuals or, or whoever can go to get people to give them money to do something. Money raising. Yeah, money raising for your startup. Um, yeah. And so Kickstarter in particular is focused on commercial enterprises. They don't allow charity. Indiegogo, I think, is a little more easygoing than that. Yeah. That said, Ubuntu has elected to go with Indiegogo. Okay, well, what is this? Come on, come because your product. Go, 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 what go. is this? It is a smartphone. But it is a really expensive smartphone um, because, like, if you look at the spec sheet, so they, they said that they're not going to spec the processor, but they are going to put in the fastest quad-core processor at the time that they can find. Okay. Well, actually, in fact, they said the fastest processor at the time. They didn't say how many cores. No, okay. I, I'm sure it said quad-core. Anyway. doesn't matter. doesn't you know, um, Four gigs of RAM, which is double what you get in most devices now. Okay. Um, then um, they, just, they also um, spent quite a long time describing how they're not going to put in a 1080p screen. They say it's, they, they just don't see the value in that on a four point – I think it's going to be a 4.5-inch device. Mm. Okay. Agree with and, that. It, and instead, they are going to go so – still, I don't want it. Instead Why of, do it's, I want instead, it? Instead, they're going to get rid of stuff like Corning Gorilla Glass – and um, and use a sapphire crystal display. Um, why you want it is it dual boots Android and and Ubuntu Mobile OS. And then on top of that, it also uses Ubuntu Desktop OS. So you'll have Ubuntu for Android running in there to start off with. So this thing is going to be your PC in your pocket, literally. Okay, so HDMI they out. announced Ubuntu for mobile. Could not get a partnership signed with any manufacturer and decided to do that. Uh, but, Roll uh, your own. But apparently, now this is where things get hairy because they, they are not playing it safe with this at all. They said in order to do this properly, we need $32 million. Okay. This, it, it's by far the most ambitious crowdfunding campaign I've ever seen. I think it's officially the most ambitious ever made. $32 million is just unheard of. Um, and, the, but, and then they said, if we do not reach that target, there will be no Ubuntu Edge, but they will focus on commercial devices. So the, the, their plan B is third-party manufacturers. And they might have proven that there is a demand for this by the amount of people who've already signed up. So even if they fail now, they don't fail. Yeah. And my biggest problem with this thing, and I've been trying to – when we were having discussion, I was going wrong. Um, there is no risk here for Ubuntu. Sure. They, they, they're putting nothing up for people to get this phone. So basically it's getting the public to, to take all their risk on. Um, yes and no. It's because an unproven phone. There's, there's no th risk. They are them, risking but, but their reputation. Does it exist yet? I mean, th this have they made a model yet? Or? Uh, so so uh, the, the news from the cheap seats is that they do have a prototype, which is a step up from having You know that cheap seat controls nothing. your audio? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. More than that. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no. This uh, is like the Matrix when Neo's mouth <laughs> closes up. Anyway, um, I would view point, that as an, point well made, Mixer. I would, I, I would view that as important because at least they have one so that you yeah. can see what you're buying into. Yeah, for those uh, of you who have watched us before, we covered a thing in the past called the Next Phone. Um, and Gareth, and Gareth was quite excited about this, and he and I have been ha have talked about something like this for a while. The next phone was supposed to be a th your phone that becomes a tablet that becomes a PC, and but these guys were asking for I think nine hundred thousand dollars to to just do R and D. You would not get a product at the end of that. Okay. What Ubuntu is offering you is you but put up six hundred six hundred dollars to eight hundred and thirty dollars depending on where in the campaign you sign up, and uh, you get a phone. They, but now, so th this is where they commit themselves. If they make, if they get their thirty-two million dollars, they have to deliver phones. If they do not deliver them, any reputation they have is shot. Anything they would ever do in this regard is shot. Uh, like uh, th it would pretty much be that they have removed themselves from the mobile phone race because nobody would trust I mean, them ever they, again. They developed a, a teaser operating system that could, you could only load on Nexus. That's I correct. I mean, why don't just run further with that and then give me the option, okay, you know what, I'll, wa I'll void the warranty on my Samsung. I want to load Ubuntu. But they do that. But it, it's third-party people who have to make the ROMs for your particular phone. Yes. And, uh, and, so. and the other challenge they would face then is to get non-technical people to use their platform. Yes. And, and they don't want to land up in a situation where Ubuntu is once again the operating system for techies. Yeah, but it's going to sorry, happen. this whole thing is about an operating system for techies. The, no, so no, this you're is a device for techies. You, I know. So you're going to get all the techies evangelizing your new 
great phone and operating system. Well, look, the real foul is everybody just, just uses the Android part of it. Yes. yes. And, and so this is the interesting thing is that they, they initially said that how this, how this is going to work the best is Android and Ubuntu for Android initially out the box. Um, the, because the, the whole seamless switching between Ubuntu Mobile and Ubuntu OS is not going to work at launch, um, they've said. So they're going to work. Snap. They're going to work. I'm getting worried. This company is promising a lot of things and not delivering. Where's Ubuntu TV? <laughs> well, they no, teased us with that. Sure, but I think and then nobody then wants it because the fact is Samsung has their own ecosystem. LG has their own ecosystem. Sony has their own no, ecosystem. Okay. Nobody wait, wants wait, wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. Where's Google TV? Exactly. Okay. Nobody wants it because everybody has their own ecosystem. So, and I think uh, Canonical have realized they need to build their – they have their own ecosystem. And just nobody will allow them on because it will it will directly compete with their ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. So it's in, not in Google's best interests to let Ubuntu run on Nexuses or to help them run on Nexuses. Can we direct your attention We are looking at the screen. Ooh, they've oh, reached the five million mark. Thank you very much, Mixer. All right, and watch this. This is a refresh. Is that <laughs> one, one K every second? Like Okay. So, so Mixer, we had this discussion earlier wow. in that day. Um, there's only a very limited quantity of cheap devices. Can we please just <laughs> take the pain on our credit card and buy one of these? <laughs> oh, great. I, you have it. It's live on the internet. Okay, so you can play <laughs> and commission. get a device. If it, if it succeeds and everything, you if actually you, get a phone out of it. For 32 million, you get a device. Okay, so, so as you can see, the, okay. the 625 one is already sold out, and that's the one I wanted. Uh, the 675 one is available now. So they've got various tiers. And, uh, and um, when you sign up for but this But you know program, this thing's not going to work. You just said that, I mean, it will be an Android I phone. have a different concern <laughs> it's, it's as well. It's going to be an Android look, phone. It, well, I must say, worst case scenario, and I must say, look, the phone is, a, is an awesome phone. Worst case, an Android phone with 128 gigs of storage. And you know, well, I was just me, thinking the other, the other thing is you, you're going to be triple booting that thing. So how much space do you really get at the end? That's uh, true. You're going to need – look, you're still going to have a lot of storage. Look, you can fit Ubuntu in under 10 gigs. Sure. Right? So let's say they leave me 64 gigs. Okay. So let's assume it's not like Microsoft where they didn't leave you much <laughs> space on the tablet. <laughs> on the 32 gig, yes. you had like 5 gigs but free. I would still have wait, a bit wait, of concern because it's, it's still three operating systems. I, I can be honest right now. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be better than Microsoft. Okay. So maybe you get 100 gig. I'll, I'd happily live with 100 gig. You know? I'd happily live with 64 gigs. It's going to be between 64 and 100 gigs, I think we can safely say. Yeah. Um, Android, even, even if you look at devices with, f with 4 gigs of flash storage, Android doesn't leaves you with like 1.6 gigs at the end of that. Yeah. So it doesn't take up so much space. Anyway, this well, looks, let's see what happens. Yeah, this looks very interesting. I'm pledging for this tonight. How Indiegogo works, and we've just put an article about this up on my broadband, um, is you pledge the money now. Um, if you're in South Africa, you have to pay an extra $30 and they will ship it door to door to you. I asked them, I don't want to have to deal with my postal system. And they said, yes. shop, Jan. <laughs> we're doing door to door for you guys or, in South or Africa. Or the American one. Yes. Or, yeah, USPS. I don't want to have to deal with USPS. Exactly. I want DHL, FedEx, pick a courier. That's the guy I want. Um, that, so it will be door to door delivery. They will um, be. Uh, uh, oh, and I asked them uh, why Indiegogo and not Kickstarter, and they said because of the open principles behind them. So Indiegogo is like uh, far more sort of open sourcey vibe around them. And um, then I also asked them – How long? Uh, when will it launch? How long are you going to wait? <laughs> May 2014. May 2014. That is incredibly ambitious. If they make that target – I will well, be if they very have impressed. The prototype, then they have a working entirely prototype. possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and then the other thing I asked them is that other manufacturers, Next Phone in the back of my head, Motorola with the Atrix in the back of my head, um, and Asus in the back of my head, w while I was asking this question, um, have tried smartphone PC convergence using Android with little success. What gives the Ubuntu Edge a shot at success? And so they gave me their whole spiel about the converged experience. So they've got the, the phone and the desktop OS, they've got the shared data, and they're going to run everywhere, same core code. Um, uh, all that stuff. And, and then at the end, I love this. Also, necessary hardware has been expensive in the past. We can enable convergence through standard HDMI cable. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the side. That was, that, was, that was like such a cool little stab. I would just the love them there. to see just bringing me out an OS that I can load on the phone that works. I mean, these phones can work. I mean, what is this? this is a, like, but isn't it? Dual core. 
got 64 gigs of SD in here and I've got a 64, 32 gigs. You're just going to have to wait for the ROM to, for, for some, look, it's an open source ROM or it's open source software. So I'm sure as soon as it's stable enough, people will make, Stop run, making it. will okay. run ROMs for existing Android but surely, devices. A platform's limitation is always going to be the, like the apps that are on the thing from the word go. Yeah. Like, and so what they're doing with Ubuntu Touch, um, while we're calling it Ubuntu Touch, they have now started calling it Ubuntu Mobile OS. So I guess I have to start calling it that. Um, <laughs> is that they're doing the whole HTML5 thing, which is a lot okay. like what BlackBerry's doing. So, in other words, HTML5 is becoming this sort of default, like Can code for ML Android, a iOS, and HTML5. In the works, yeah. there was, there's a quite intensive uh, article written in the past two weeks yes. about JavaScript and the actual speed things you get out of it. Writing, this is not using ACE and just writing native JavaScript. You know, where it is... You're not going to write anything large. So, look, for me, and this is the one problem with the article, is interfaces fast enough for JavaScript works perfectly. All your low-level code, though, when you're starting to do like rendering or uh, you want to do an image manipulation, you don't want to do that in JavaScript. So what do they offer me to do that? And that was my big problem with like the Firefox. Yeah. Yes. They do have yes. native code. Um, they, 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 they do have native stuff. Um, so for that, in the interim, while web technologies or cross-platform technologies catch up, if they ever do. I mean, how, how long have we tried had cross-platform? We had ANSI C. How did that end up? We had people trying Java. How, how, was well, it, no, how no, did no, that no. go for you? There are, there are some signs with ECMA 7. Okay. Which is JavaScript, the new one. Yes. That they might be doing some typing stuff, and apparently that's one of the big things that slows it down. Um, just with the JIT compile. This is really geeking out. Yes, it's a good up, show. Um, that they might be able to fix some of that stuff. So we might be getting there, but we just unfortunately we, yeah. with, with uh, JavaScript right yeah. now. Anyway, the bottom line of this is I think the, the jury's out, but I'm certainly buying one of these, and I'm not going to eat for the rest of the month. It's going to be great. Um, with that, uh, we, 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 Di diet nice plan and again. a phone. Yeah. <laughs> Score. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, we, it's, we sometimes have a bit of a section we, we like to call the how-to or the Q&A, and Johan Els has kindly volunteered uh, for one this week. Game save manager. Johan, how many times have we got to hear about your game no, save no, no, worse? No. Game save manager was something <laughs> I brought up. Then there was that Kickstarter that started and the died. South, the South African guys. Yeah, yeah shame. He never That's made right. it. So yeah. I actually still pledged and I'd love to see what's going to happen there. Yeah. So I formatted my machine recently and I was back to, okay, let's reinstall World of War, uh, what, um, Modern Warfare 3. Um, yes, I'm still battling on that one. And then realizing, firing up the game and going, um, Firing up the game and realizing, oh, damn, back at 0%. Luckily, oh, I had Game Save Manager, which actually, still, guys, just look at it. I mean, it's free, it's cost you nothing, and I just, I lost my battery now, so I can't open. You look at the supported game list, it's just unbelievable. Everything is in. I mean, they do, they do Game Save for World of Warcraft. I'm like, but this is an MMO. So, so what they've got yeah, like plugins and stuff that's in your, in your directory so that yeah. you can just spam it again that you don't have to download it from the web again there are like oh. u UI scripts that you yeah. run and write in Lua that Mods. World of Warcraft uses yeah, okay. yeah. yeah and they've got some plugin going with Dropbox so they can actually sync your save games directly to Dropbox so they do exactly because I remember we had this discussion when we spoke about the Kickstarter they would let you save to whatever cloud storage you wanted they would integrate with Drive and Dropbox well and look anything. Dropbox is already syncing on your machine so you just point it to your Dropbox folder mm -hmm. but they reckon they've actually got intelligence that speaks to Dropbox directly but yeah, it's just just look at it. It saves you lots of headaches when you've got to restore your machine and you know your stuff. Your game save games are backed up, really. But on then the next point, uh, free to play. Yes. Okay, so I see a lot of guys have now gone free to play. We spoke about this on Saturday, quickly, man. So how free is it actually? <laughs> yes. How free? I just wanted to. I mean, I know I heard about. I didn't know that World of Warcraft has gone free to play. I don't think it's just yet. I think it's coming still. No, but that's that I activate it. So I know okay, it's there. Okay. I haven't logged in yet, so I can't really tell you till week can <laughs> you go. Okay. And I mean, Star Wars Old Republic wasn't live for long, and then they decided to go free to play. Yeah, and a lot of those games, Dungeons and Dragons Online. No, that's what I'm asking. Okay, so Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just to come back to Blizzard, I see you can now get Diablo 3, uh, Starcraft 2, and World of Warcraft as a free to play. Really? Yeah, little starter edition. So I don't know how far yeah. you're going to get into no, the storyline. No, 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 yeah, no. But you've yeah. always been able to do starter edition for all of them. Yeah, yeah. For like oh, years. Yeah, starter editions have existed for some time um, for all of them. 
Yeah. So, anyway. um, so, so, um, what's what's your question with regards? What to other ones are there? Um, oh, okay. Planet Side is apparently like completely free. Yeah, so. and, and you get different you get different flavors of free to play. You get the, yeah. the the ones that the gamers call uh, with with very little love in their voice, pay to win models. Mm -hmm. So, yes. in, uh, and then you get something like a League of Legends or or Heroes of New Earth, where um, they also went free. Uh, is League of Legends, but Dota Two definitely, I think, is free to play. Mm -hmm. And then you can pay for stuff, and they're making good dosh apparently, but it's all cosmetic. Yes. Anything else um, you have to unlock in the game by normal gameplay. So it's not a pay to win model, it's a pay to look cool model. Okay. Yeah. So you get different styles of, of these free to play games, and it's tricky to know because they, they sort of leave a bad taste in the mouth. You're like, oh, so now what? Now you can just pay and get all the sweetest gear without actually having to go through all the trouble that all the early gamers had to go through to get them. So maybe good subject for to take on with my gaming. To actually just write up which of these are free to pay, what? Pay, pay to win. Yeah, pay to win. Or pay to win. Yeah, but the pay to win ones suck. Yes. Yes. So the only way you can get anywhere is you've got to pay. But yeah. you'll, you'll find if it's a pay to win game, it's not a very well rated game. Yes. So you can tell that usually in the top higher tiers of a, you know, like games ratings for free to play games, the higher the rating is, the, the better the model is. So it's usually for like cosmetics, like you said, or, you know, uh, other things. You know, it's never going to be something that impacts you directly yeah yeah um so nice table would be nice sure yeah. and, and my, my gaming uh, is coming on the show in future again so we had this discussion in the office today so uh, we'll certainly prod their brains yeah. the next time they're on the show okay cool with that we always end the show on something cool and fun this time provided by tim tim it's good to have you back and have some cats at the end of the show here come the cats no <laughs> Oh dear. I, 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 I can't remember where I pulled these off of. They're just very cool. And this is also a shout out to Cecilia. <laughs> Come on. Look at that picture. Oh, dear. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Tim, where can people find you? Uh, not really. <laughs> at work. Great stuff. <laughs> He's also at Tim underscore Hawk on Twitter if you want to pest him there, but you'll never get anything out of him. Well, if you send him a message, I might reply. <laughs> but don't expect me to write anything. <laughs> Johan else, when no, I'm also mostly at work at the moment. I have got my website, triple w dot hoo-l.co.za. Otherwise, yeah, catch me on channel 319 DSTV. That's my work. <laughs> Good stuff. Luke, where can people find you? Poke me on Twitter at FRK, yeah. Po uh, poking is what happens on Facebook, Luke. Well... Mixed metaphor then. <laughs> but yeah, that's P where... Poke you on Twitface. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and uh, that's where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, I don't use the others, really. Uh, cool bananas. No wob site. No. Nah. Or blag. No. Nah. Ah, oh, excellent. Nah. I'm Jan Vermeulen. You can find me mostly at mybroadband.co.za, but I am on these social networking things that eat all our lunches as content producers at Jan VZA on Twitter and uh, Jan Vermeulen on Google+, and I'm also on Facebook. I even Facebooked a little today. I was, I was quite proud of myself. I haven't Facebooked in like two years. <laughs> Oh. I'll go check that out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, no, I was just replying to other people's Facebook stuff. That's Facebook. Oh, so I won't see you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Any yeah. people can find you at AnnieBugZA on Twitter. Is that correct? Excellent. So I'm just going to – you won't see him except in real life. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can find us right here at Let's Talk Geek, um, youtube.com forward slash LT Star Network. One day we'll sort that out. Um, it's a long story, but LT Star, you get it, right? You're a geek, so LT Star Network. All our videos are on there. If you feel like something to lull you to sleep at night or to keep your company on a long road. What are you trying to say? If you're hard training it in the morning <laughs> and you want something awesome and uplifting to listen to, we're on there. Um, you can also, uh, Let's Talk Geek and Let's Talk Network have their own accounts. You can go and follow us there. Check us out. We also run shows Let's Talk Possibility on a Monday and Let's Talk Hack once a month. Check those guys out as well. We'll see you again. Maybe not the same time, same place next week, but we'll keep you in the loop. With that, check you later. Cheers.